Hello, I'm Pastor Adiel DePano, lead pastor of First United Methodist Church of Pasadena. I would like to thank you for watching the rebroadcast of our Sunday worship services and wish you would join us in our Sunday lineup of activities beginning with Adult and Children's Sunday School at 9, Worship Service at 10, and Youth Ministries at 5.30. We are a reconciling congregation that welcomes all persons. Come and be part of our vibrant community that seeks to serve God as faithfully and fruitfully as we can. God bless you. After the completion of, of Disney World, uh, someone remarked, isn't it too bad that, that Walt Disney didn't live to see this? And Mike Vance, uh, creative director of Disney Studios, replied, he did see it. That's why it's here. Everything in life that we use or hold, eat or watch, wear, sit in or listen to, in other words, everything that is a creation of human ingenuity, started out as a dream. Before anything can become tangible, it must first become a reality in the mind of its dreamer. Only when the dream is real for one can it become real for all. Not until the dream is real for me can it become real for you? Remember that, my friends, for the implications are very real and critical in terms of sharing our faith. If it is not real for you, how can you dream of making it real for somebody else? The internet, antibiotics, anesthetics, the printing press, plumbing, various tools like the hammer, pliers, screwdriver, wrench, zippers, Christmas tree lights, quadruple bypass, heart surgery, combustion engines, cotton candy, x-rays, air conditioning, flush toilets, matches, eyeglasses, espresso. <laughs> All these things were once dreams in a person's mind. The dreams of others make our lives tasty, pleasant, and sometimes even possible. So why is it? Why is it that we live in a world furnished with the dreams of others, yet there are so many nightmares stalking the land? Why did we first nightmare up nuclear weaponry instead of dreaming up world peace? And we're all on edge, especially the people on the Korean Peninsula, for what could be if, if somebody miscalculates and, and knowing that the other side, that both sides, have access to nuclear weaponry? Why did we nightmare up high-tech security systems and gated communities instead of dreaming up communities of trust? Why did we nightmare up fast foods instead of dreaming up a way to feed every hungry child? Why did we nightmare up ethnic cleansing and human trafficking instead of dreaming up societies of justice and equality? One member of the Buster generation, or those born between 1964 and, and 1983, I wish I could claim I was part of this uh, generation. I'm, I'm a little older than that. Um, 
One member of that generation put it this way, I had a dream. It's not I have a dream, it's in the past tense. I had a dream. Writing to his church's newsletter, this individual expressed the despair, cynicism, and pessimism of his generation by speaking about the death of idealism, of passion, and dreaming, of transforming vision. He spoke of an almost ubiquitous death of dreaming among his peers. There's actually a Peanuts comic strip where Charlie Brown says, I've developed a new philosophy. I only dread one day at a time. <laughs> but because the Good Friday nightmare was transformed into the Easter dream, because Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Ma Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them found the stone rolled away from the tomb and found it empty. Because angelic beings met the women at the tomb and said to them, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Because God kept God's word about swallowing up death, and taking its sting away, the way has been opened for all nightmares, for ending all nightmares, and incarnating all dreams. The resurrection means that Christians can expectantly dream of plenty in the midst of poverty, dream of compassion in the midst of apathy, Dream of justice in the midst of inequity. Dream of holiness in the midst of hell. And dream of love in the midst of hate. New generations of Christians are, are despairing of dreaming because they have not yet learned to distinguish between dreaming dreams of happiness and dreaming dreams of joy. Who says Christians are supposed to be happy? Christians are supposed to dream dreams. We've taken too literally what Sunday school and summer camp taught us. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, stomp your feet, and do all sorts of Christian calisthenics. We put too much emphasis on looking happy and being happy instead of dreaming dreams. It is time for Christians to tolerate no further nonsense about happiness. The first century world did not say, see how happy Christians are? It said, see how these Christians love one another? Christians are not necessarily happier than non-Christians, at least as the world defines happiness. But we are more joyful. But we risk more dreaming. As uh, Reverend Dr. Ignacio Castuera reminded us this morning during the Easter sunrise service at Altadena United Methodist Church, Stories of victory, such as the resurrection, doesn't mean a thing if the people who share the story or tell the story are not familiar with struggle. Again, there is a Charlie Brown cartoon strip where Lucy asks, why do you think we're put on earth, Charlie Brown? Charlie replies, to make others happy. Lucy says, I don't think I'm making anyone happy. Of course nobody's making me very happy either. Then in the final panel, 
Lucy screams at the top of her lungs, somebody's not doing his job. <laughs> Easter dreaming isn't about happiness. Christians have no right to happiness. Christians may or may not be more happy than non-Christians. Joy, on the other hand, is a condition of gladness, delight, exaltation of spirit, or the beatitude of heaven. Happiness is not a fundamental category for the Christian. Joy is. Joy is the stuff Easter dreams are made of. God did not put us on this earth to be happy. God put us here to enjoy God and glorify God, to experience a joy unspeakable and full of glory, the joy that comes from Easter dreams without denying the fallenness of the world we live in. Certainly Jesus did not deny the fallenness of earth and creation. George William Rutler writes, the crucified one is not an abstraction, and he was not crucified for abstractions. Sickness is not an abstraction, and he never did eradicate sickness. The sick are not abstractions, and he manifestly did heal them. Hunger is an abstraction. And to the confusion of many social philosophers, he did not eliminate it. The hungry are solid, if empty, and he filled them with good things. He blesses the meek, not meekness, and he blesses the humble, while knowing that humility will be cursed by the proud until the end of the world. It was with renewed dreams of Easter joy that the women raced back to tell the other disciples what they knew. Christ is risen. The Easter dream that makes all other dreams possible lives on because of these women. Why did the Berlin Wall, for example, come crashing down? Because one church in Leipzig East Germany, the Kikolai Protestant Church, began dreaming the Easter dream. Its pastor, Christian Führer, believed that it was time the Christian church stopped diluting the message of the gospel. So his church started some prayer meetings on Monday evenings, prayer meetings that began with the Easter dream that all things are possible. You all know how to get together, right? Something potentially big starts with a simple get-together for prayer. Within a short time, Pastor Christian, uh, in his own words, says that the people praying encountered in our services and meetings the miraculous experience of feeling the effect of the Word. God's presence was with us. It was with us, all of us. And soon the number of those praying swelled to over 200,000 people, 90% of whom were non-Christians, but were drawn by this Easter energy. It was these prayers who poured from the meeting on that fateful Monday evening to protest in the streets. Wir sind das Volk. We are the people. And created the movement that toppled the Berlin Wall. Why they hadn't felt it before? Pastor Fuhrer theorizes in a 1994 interview in the Christian Science Monitor was because the church had been seduced by, quote, the bourgeois image of Jesus as one who doesn't disturb, who is only passive, who is there only to make people happy. 
through prayer and Bible study, they found the Jesus that spoke directly to the people the truth, rather than a Jesus who diluted the truth. They found in a resurrected Jesus the power to dream again good dreams for their city and their nation. Indeed, Pastor Fuhrer believes it may be more difficult to keep the Easter dream alive in freedom than in oppression because in freedom one is tempted to dream materialistic dreams instead of spiritual dreams. He said, for 40 years we had in the East the experience of theoretical materialism and atheism. Now, five years later, we are confronted with something new, actual materialism. Material, materialism used to be a theory. In this integration with the West, it is a fact. It is more difficult to identify the enemy the anything-goes mentality coming from the West is a problem for the church. In this pluralistic mess, he said, it is hard for young people to find their identity, to find true values to stick with. What's your Easter dream, church? Is it simply about Jesus making you happy? making your life more simple, providing for all your dreams so you don't have to sweat it? Will you dedicate your life now to dreaming God-sized dreams for yourself, your family, our faith community, our city, our country, and our world? Remember, no dream has ever come true without sacrifice. But remember, too, our Easter dreams always trump our Good Friday nightmares.